Hey, it's Dan, and in this video, we'll flush the brake fluid on this BMW F750GS. You'll want to do this service every two years, and it's actually pretty easy to do at home. Now, brake fluid tends to accumulate moisture, so you want to use fresh fluid from an unopened container, and not something that's been sitting around your garage for a while. I like using a catch can like this because it makes the job a lot easier. It catches the old fluid, comes with a clear hose so you can see any bubbles coming out of the caliper, and also come with attachments that easily pop onto the leather screws. Take a look at the video description for a link. The job will also go easier and faster if you have something to suck the old fluid out of the reservoir. So I'm going to use one of these guys. I picked it up on Amazon. So again, take a look at the video description for a link. And finally, if you have a tool like the GS911 or similar that allows you to activate the ABS pumps, it's a good idea to activate that so that you can flush the old fluid out of the pumps, flush it again through the system. That way, everything is fresh. There are a few things you want to be mindful of anytime you do this job. First of all, the brake fluid is pretty corrosive, so you don't want it sitting on any painted surfaces. It will damage them. What I like to do is fill a spray bottle full of water and just have it on the side ready to go. The other super important thing to keep an eye on is the fluid level in the reservoir. Remember, as you're bleeding the brakes, you're actually pushing the old fluid out of the system through the bleed screws. That means that the level in the reservoir is going to drop over time. So keep a close eye on it and top it off periodically. What you really want to make sure of is that you never get it to a point where it's going to start sucking air into the system. If you do space out and get some air sucked into the system, it's not the end of the world. You have to keep bleeding it until the air bubble works its way through the system, comes out of the bleed screw, and the brake lever feels firm again. So the first thing we'll do is clean up the reservoir to make sure that we don't introduce any contaminants when we open it. It's also a good idea to protect the bike from brake fluid spills by wrapping the reservoir with some paper towels or a clean rag. Next up, we'll use a pump to suck out as much of the old brake fluid out of the reservoir as we can. Take your time here and be careful not to spill anything on the bike. Next, we'll open a fresh container of DOT4 brake fluid and fill up the reservoir. And finally, we'll attach the bleeder hose to the bleeder screws. So to bleed the system, we'll use the brake lever to force the old fluid out of the system through the bleeder screws. This means that we'll squeeze the brake lever, use a wrench to open the bleeder screw, close the bleeder screw when the brake lever touches the handlebar, and then release the brake lever. There are two things we'll need to keep in mind. First, keep a close eye on the fluid level in the reservoir and make sure that it doesn't run dry. If it does, you'll start sucking air into the brake system through the reservoir. Second, don't release the brake lever until you close the bleeder screw. If you do, you'll suck air into the system through the bleeder screw. And here you can see how the brake fluid level in the reservoir drops each time the brake lever is released. So you want to keep a close eye on the fluid level and top it off when it gets down to about a third full. So. We'll pump the brake a couple times, squeeze it, and hold it squeezed. We'll open the bleeder screw, which will force the old brake fluid through the bleeder hose and into the catch can. When the brake lever is fully squeezed and makes contact with the handlebar, we'll close the bleeder screw. And after the bleeder screw is closed, we'll release the brake lever, which will suck the fresh fluid from the reservoir. We'll keep doing this until we see clean, fresh fluid coming out of the caliper. Here you could see the clear fluid in the top hose and the old darker fluid in the bottom hose. So at this point, most of the fluid in the system is fresh, but we'll still have some old fluid stuck behind the caliper and the pistons. We can force it out by opening the bleeder screw and then pushing the caliper against the rotor. This will compress the pistons into the caliper and force out the old brake fluid. If you have a hard time pushing in the calipers, you can also carefully use a flat blade screwdriver between the pads and the pistons and push them in that way. As you do this, you should see a small amount of brake fluid be forced out through the bleeder screw. At this point, we'll squeeze and hold the brake lever, close the bleeder screw, and repeat the process a few more times. And next, we'll repeat exactly the same steps on the other caliper. And if you have the GS911, you can use it to bleed the old fluid out of the ABS pump. You want to go to a detected vehicle, ABS brakes, service functions, 
functions, and then either select bleed the rear brakes or bleed the front brakes. So here it's gonna show you detailed instructions on what to do. We'll click the continue flush one button. What it's gonna ask you to do is squeeze and hold the front brake lever at least three times for two seconds. So click the button. You can hear the pump running. One, two. One, two. One, two. So what I'll do now is bleed the system one more time. The idea here is to get the old fluid that was extracted out of the ABS bump out of the system. So I only need to do one of the calipers. All right, so I'm done with the bleeding. We'll go back to the tool. All right, so I skipped over flush one since I just did that and go to flush two next. So that's all there is to it. I'll go ahead and bleed the system one more time to make sure I get all the old fluid out there, clean everything up, Top off the fluid to the right level, and I'll be good to go. Okay, so at this point, we're done flushing the front brakes, so we'll top off the brake fluid to the upper marker on the inside of the reservoir. And now we'll wipe down the reservoir and install the cap. It's always a good idea to spray down and clean off the reservoir as well as both bleeder screws with some warm water and paper towels or a clean rag just to make sure that you don't have any old brake fluid sitting around and damaging the surfaces. So the process to bleed the rear brake is almost exactly the same. We'll start by removing and temporarily relocating the rear reservoir. I like to use a zip tie to secure it on the outside of the frame to make it easier to refill. Just as with the front brake, you want to clean off the reservoir before you open it to avoid any contamination, and you'll want to protect the area with some paper towels or a clean rag. Next we'll drain the old fluid. We'll fill up the reservoir with fresh fluid. And we'll repeat the same procedure as we did with the front brakes. You'll press and hold the brake, open the bleeder screw, close the bleeder screw, release the brake, and repeat. Now remember, the rear reservoir is much smaller than the front one, so it's going to drain more quickly. Pay extra attention to the fluid level and top it off frequently. Once you have clear fluid coming out of the bleeder screw, you want to push in the caliper to force out the old fluid that's trapped behind the pistons, and then repeat the steps a few more times. And if you have the GS911 tool, you'll want to activate the ABS bump just like you did with the front, and repeat the flush. And finally, we'll wipe down the rear reservoir, tap it off, and close it up. 